So now that we've seen the basics of the struct, let's create a new class, none again, and this time let's make a simple class instead of a struct. While we're here, might as well create a new actor too, so I can show you the basics of how to set up an actor in C++. So simply click actor, next, and then create. If you want to do a basic class, it's pretty much the same as a struct, you simply have to put u class above. And just like the struct, you can put the blueprint type if you want to make it a blueprint variable. When you add u class, just like the struct, you had to add f before. For the class, you need to add u before. So simply add u before the name and also your constructor. You will also need to add the generated body for your class. And the include, then the name of your file, dot generated dot h. Now, just like my struct, I can add a u property, int elf, just like that, and make it blueprint rewrite and edit anywhere. One thing that's different with the classes, however, is that your classes have to be a u object. If I try to compile without doing this, it doesn't work. So you simply have to derive your class from public u object. And just like that, it compiles. Another thing that you can do in classes that you can't do in structs is to add a function. So you can add, for example, a void set health with your float new HP, and then you can set it into your CPP. And then I can simply set my health equals to the new HP. However, if I just do that, I will not be able to access this function in my blueprint. So maybe if you don't need that, you can simply do this. But if you need to use it in your blueprint, then you will need to put something above it, just like the property. So in the case of function, you can probably guess it, it's u function. Again, you can check the documentation to see all of the things you can put in there. But the most useful ones are probably blueprint callable, blueprint implementable and native event. So first, if you put blueprint callable, that will simply mean that you can use that in the blueprint. So if you have a u my class variable, you can drag from it and call set health with the value you want. Next, you can use blueprint implementable event to call something in your blueprint from your C++. So for example, in this case, when I set health in the C++ class, I probably want to update my UI after, but my UI is made in a widget in blueprint. So instead, I want to call the update UI here, and then I will override this function in my blueprint and give it a behavior such as updating the UI. And the next one you can use is blueprint native event which is going to be sort of a mix of the two. It will call something in the C++ and then a blueprint. If you use blueprint native event, you can run a function in your C++ and you can override it in your blueprint to add additional things. So for example, you can have a void jump and then if you want to use it in your C++, you simply have to do you my class. Then you put the name of your function underscore implementation and then the code you put in here will run when you call that function. So for example, if I put health equals 20, when I call that function, health will be set to 20, and then I can override that in a blueprint to add more functionalities. Okay, so now we've got a blueprint callable function, a blueprint implementable event function, and a blueprint native event function. And I simply put some basic code just to test it right now. So now that this is compiled, I can open up the game and show you how it looks in blueprint. Also, I forgot, since I want to create a blueprint child of this class, I need to add in the U class blueprintable, which means I can use it as a parent for a blueprint. So now that I open my project, I can right click, go into blueprint class, and then open up all classes at the bottom, and I can search for my class. And since I put blueprintable, I can click on it and make a child class of it. So I can call it, for example, BP my class. And if I open it and I go into the class settings, you can see parent class is my class. If you check the variables, you can see you don't see the elf variable, but if you search for it, you can get it or set it. And also if you click the little icon here and show inherited variables, you can see from my class the health variable. You can also see in the class defaults, I can change the default health. So the first function we made was set health. If we type it, we can see it's here because we put blueprint callable above it. So you can see I can call my set health and I can put the HP I want. Also, you can see here in the function, two are overridable. So if I click override, I can override my update UI, which is the function I set as implementable event, which means that when I call it in the C++, it's going to call it here 
So whatever I do, like print string, it's going to print it when I call this function in my C++. And I can also override my jump, which then I need to call the parent function. And the parent function is going to be the jump underscore implementation I put in the C++. And then I can add another thing after in the blueprint. Also, even though this blueprint is a child of my C++ class, it is still a blueprint. So I can still add function such as print health. Even if that function is not in my C++, it causes no problem at all. I can still print it and I can still call it. So for example, here I can simply get my health and print it. Even though my health is in C++ and this function is in blueprint, it doesn't matter. Now I can go in my first person character, add a variable. Let's say I'll call it my class. Then I will set the type to my class. You can see I have the choice between my class, which is the one in C++, or BP my class, which is the child blueprint class we just made. If I make it my class C++, I will have access to everything, but it will not have these features or that new print health function I just made. However, if I make my type blueprint my class, which is the new blueprint I made, then I will have all of the C++ stuff plus all of the blueprint stuff. Now some of you might be wondering, when do you want to create a struct or when do you want to create a class? What's the difference? Well a struct you can see here, I can simply put my health and then I can simply drag my struct and break it down, get my health and there's no problem at all. However, if I try to edit the default value of my class, you can see it doesn't work like that. And if I try to get my class and set health without doing anything before, then when I click start, it will have a error just like this. Access none trying to read property my class. And that's because the struct is a direct value, but a class is a pointer. If you know C++ well, you know what that means. But if you don't, that basically means you need to construct your class before using them, while the struct you don't need to construct anything, it's just a value like a int or a boolean. So for my class, what I need to do first is construct object from class. Then I want to construct a my class or BP my class. Then it will construct the class and return a pointer. So I can simply set my class to that value. And then I can use that value, for example, to set the health. Now, if I try to run this, it should work. And it printed update UI because it called my set health, which then called my C set health, which then called my update UI implementable event which then called my bp update ui right here which printed update ui i could also make it for example print health after updating the ui so if i run it it should print update ui and then the 10 i put in my function right here i also forgot to put my jump function blueprint callable so i can't call it in blueprint but if i called it it would run the c++ code and then run this event right here so that's pretty much all of the basics you need to know to start using C++ together with Blueprint. With this, you can call Blueprint from C++. With native event, you can have C++ code run and then Blueprint code run. And using Blueprint callable, you can call your C++ functions from your Blueprint. Now let's try to do a quick little example to show how it works with a more realistic situation. So here I simply created a new class and clicked on actor before. You can see at the top it already has the U class, but we don't need to put anything in it because this class is already a child of actor and actor already has blueprint type, blueprint double, so we don't need to put any of that. You can see also when you generate a class based on an actor, you already get the begin play and the tick function, which are the same as in blueprint, so this runs at the start and this runs every frame. So first, let's add a static mesh component to my new actor. So if I check how the character does it, he has a U skeletal mesh component and it gives it a name. So let's do the same thing here. I'm going to do a U static mesh component and then give it a name static mesh. I also need to make sure to put it as a U property visible defaults only. Actually, you can change visible defaults only to visible anywhere. It doesn't really matter as long as you can view it and change it in your editor. Then if we go back to the character, we can see here it creates a default sub object. So I'm going to try doing the same. I'm going to do static mesh, which is my variable equals to create default sub object. Then we put a U static mesh component. And then we simply have to put the name as a text. So I'm just going to copy this 
and change the name to Mesh. Then you can see they set up an attachment to the first person camera, but in my case, I simply want to set root component to my static mesh. One thing you will notice if you use Visual Studio to write C++ code in Unreal Engine is that often the autocomplete or correction kind of fails and nothing sort of autocompletes anymore. So if I try to write static mesh, you can see it doesn't correct it, it doesn't complete it anymore. Usually if you wait a few seconds, it comes back, but sometimes it's just bug and gotta deal with it. <laughs> Apparently if you use another software, it works better, but oh, see, it just, it just came back. So now I know I did it correctly. If I made a mistake, I wouldn't know now. <laughs> Okay, so now my static mesh is set here. So just to make sure that the begin place C++ also runs, I put a little thing here that will print this on the screen to show that the actor begin play ran in C++. And I will also create a U function, blueprint callable, and then put, let's say, void test, just to test it. And here I'll put my void A, my actor. You can see since it's an actor, there's an A before, like I said, U for class, F for struct, and A for an actor. And I can simply put my test function, and I will also just put a print in here, a test function ran, just to test it. And in this function, I will simply set the world scale 3D of the static mesh, so basically the size, to a vector, let's say 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2. Now we can compile that and go into our blueprint, make a child of this. Okay, so now I'm in the editor, I'll simply right click, blueprint class, then search for my actor. I will select my actor, make a child of it, BP my actor. Then if I open it, you can see without even adding anything, there's already a static mesh here. And it says edit in C++ because it was added in C++. Now if we click on it, we can set the static mesh to let's say cube. And we can see our cube is here now. Now if I go in the event graph, you can see the begin place here. If I do init a print, let's say hello, I can simply put my BP, my actor into my world. You can see when I click play, I see hello and actor begin play C++ run because I put the code here to print when the begin play of the actor in C++ run. So you can see the begin play in C++ and in the blueprint both run. So you can have behaviors on both of them. Now I could do something like a delay of let's say two seconds, just like that. And then I could call the test function, which I wrote in blueprint just by doing call function test because this function is blueprint callable, so I can call it here. And now if I compile and run this, after two seconds, the cube should get smaller and print take test function ran. So now you can see if I run the game, after two seconds, the cube gets smaller and it says test function ran. So interacting between BP and C++ is pretty easy. So I think this video already goes over most of the basics. I might do a more advanced one later, but I think this one is long enough already. Hopefully you enjoyed. If you did, make sure to like and subscribe. It would help me out a lot. Hopefully I'll see you later.